Hey, hello everybody, how are you guys doing? We have today a really special guest, which is Anna from uh, the YouTube channel, English Like a Native, okay? So uh, we're going to have uh, tips on pronunciation. We're going to talk about her channel. She's going to give us a really, really valuable stuff. And specifically for, also there's going to be a section specially designed for Spanish speakers, okay? So uh, tell us about your story. You have a really huge YouTube channel. Uh, it's almost 900,000 subscribers. And, uh, it's, and you also have your uh, your social networks. You're going to tell us about it. You also have your private course, private uh, online course. Uh, and uh, you will tell us about it. Welcome, Anna. How are you doing? Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. So I think I think the phrase is, I've got my hands full. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> I've got my hands full. I've got my YouTube channel. Recently started on TikTok, which is just becoming oh, yeah. my how's obsession. It, how's it going? Yeah, how's good. It going? We're we're getting close to a hundred thousand uh, oh. followers, which is really exciting. Oh, but, yeah, um, that's fast. You can waste a lot of time on TikTok. It's very addictive. <laughs> TikTok. Yeah. I post, you know, sometimes three or four posts a day, and you learn really quickly what your viewers want, and you can serve them better, I feel. But I've also got my courses that I that I do on EnglishLikeANative.co.uk, and I've got two young children, so I'm usually sleep deprived <laughs> and uh, have a very short working week, so I do yeah. have my hands full. But yeah, I started absolutely. out not as a teacher. I started out actually as um, as an actress, as a musical theater actress and a theater actress. That was my background. And was it was doing my acting that um, brought me um, to voice training and um, having an interest in accents. Um, I hail from the north. I'm from like Manchester and Liverpool kind of area. I used to have a very different accent to the one I've got now. And oh, when I was that. training, I just thought, you know, I think my accent is going to hold me back. I know that's a terrible thing and that shouldn't be the case. But as an actress, mm -hmm. I needed to be able to transform into different characters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some characters don't have a Northern English or a Manchester accent. So my obsession with accents and pronunciation started at that point when I was you know, intensively training as an actress. And it took me a good year. But what happened was I actually ended up naturally transforming my just natural way of speaking as I was learning more about my own pronunciation, training my ears, learning this, what is called the standard British English accent, which is actually an RP received yeah. pronunciation. Mm -hmm. And so learning to do that naturally made me change my own voice. Now, I can switch back if mm -hmm. I want to. And when I go back to the north, see my family, my friends from my it childhood. Changed. Yeah, yeah, I slip back into my, my northern accent because I think we naturally want to fit in. And so we That's naturally cool. start to adjust. It's more integrated. And they all think I'm a little bit posh now because uh. <laughs> my accent has slipped and it's different here. So when they hear me talking... Um, like on on my YouTube videos, they're like, "Oh, you sound really posh." But you know, I, it was my choice to change, and um, it's actually done me the world of good. Changing my accent and improving the way I speak, improving my clarity, my speaking confidence—it's opened up so many doors for me. Cool. I've done lots of voiceover work. I've done lots of work as an actress with an RP accent, and then I started teaching. And it happened yeah. by accident because people just were like, I think you can help me. And I, I think I can help you too. So I started helping people primarily with speaking difficulties. So they had lisps or stutters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when someone has a, a, a speaking difficulty, their confidence is on the floor. You know, they really struggle to find work. They struggle to make friends. They struggle to have a romantic life because they just don't have any confidence. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I knew what I knew about pronunciation. I yeah. knew what I had done to change yeah. my pronunciation. Yeah. And so, yeah. so I started learning and I started experimenting and trying to put into place my own method of helping yeah. these people to change. And yeah. I'm not a speech therapist. But we had amazing results. I had people who, 
you know, went from having a strong stutter to no longer stuttering, getting a new job, getting yeah. married and just having wow. an amazing life and just being like, wow, you've changed my life. And I thought, well, amazing. if I can do this for them, I can do this as a as a as a job. Then made the YouTube channel English like a native and that became very popular. Oh, yeah, and then after meeting oh. you in 2019, I decided, um, you know, I could I could make a, a real business out of this and oh, yeah. and have structured learning for students because YouTube is great. People can learn so much from YouTube, but it's not enough. I don't think no if you really want to transform, it's great for little tips and hints and a bit of inspiration. But if you want to really make a transformation, I think you need structured learning you need to be guided that's why i decided to put together some courses so we have this pronunciation course and an assessment product where i can help listen to someone and give them really detailed feedback on exactly yeah. what they need to do to change their pronunciation improve their speaking confidence um, and clarity that's um, amazing so if you, yeah. you You've done it. You've done it before. To me, a good teacher is somebody who can replicate their own way of learning. The problem with a lot of uh, natives, like it happens to me with Spanish, I'm not aware how I learned Spanish because I learned it when I was three or two, three when I when when you when I was a baby. So I, I'm I'm not able to reflect on how I learned it. For you, you you changed your pronunciation as a, being an adult, as you said. Mm -hmm. You reflected on it, and you you were able to replicate it. So you're a total expert yeah and, uh, you know native speaker it's it's amazing so uh, it's yeah. funny people say you know I, I see it online a lot people talk about um you can't change you can't really change your accent you can't change the way you speak which always surprises me because what do yeah. actors do look at actors american actors who do convincing british accents or yeah. you know and uh speaking like uh with a russian accent or with a british yeah. accent with the perfect they can do it and absolutely everybody. and and some people say oh you know you you shouldn't have to and absolutely you shouldn't have to change you know your your way of speaking in order to be accepted into society mm -hmm. but there's a difference between like completely eradicating your accent and actually then becoming more clear and understood because if your accent's so strong that people can't understand you yeah. then you're not you're not you know you're going to come up against barriers and you're going to have difficulties progressing yeah. in work just being generally understood um okay. and it's going to lead to frustration so i think people should really um prioritize their pronunciation when learning any language i think it should start from the word go from the very beginning pronunciation is important and it's um, going to give you instant value because if you're a foreigner and you speak a good you know foreign language like a different like it's not your home language and you speak it well you can surprise everybody, you know, you're going to mm -hmm. walk everybody because it's not expected. Like mm -hmm. somebody speaking Spanish with a good British, British pronunciation or a Russian with a good uh, English pronunciation is going to wow everybody. So it's going to give you instant value. You yeah, know? you can if you want to. And the resources are there um, if you want to do it. I think the first step is ear training listening and really understanding the differences in the sounds because mm -hmm. without that you're kind of like shooting in the dark you don't know oh, what yeah. you're supposed to be working on how you're supposed to change or why an accent is different mm -hmm. so ear training and understanding those differences is is the most important thing should i give you some tips yeah absolutely i was going yeah. to tell you uh what tips uh would you would you have for what are, what are your, your top tips so to speak or for accent. Spanish speakers. Oh, yeah, especially for Spanish speakers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so there are so many things you can talk about with pronunciation. And when I do my pronunciation assessments, there are lots of things that come up. Um, but specifically for Spanish speakers, there are some things that are um, very prominent. And one of these things, I'm going to put something on screen here, yeah. is adding a vowel before words that start with S and another consonant. Oh, so wow. like S-T. Um, yeah. SP, yeah. Uh, like an S SQ. S pain, for example. Exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, that is so typical. Absolutely. Most students who add this vowel, so having this uh, S pain, eh, eh, this is usually like an E eh or an U uh sound, uh -huh. normally can't hear it. And awareness is the key. You have to be aware of doing it before you can change the habit. Normally, once that's that awareness kicks in, you can change it very quickly. So what I suggest here is 
practicing and recording yourself and seeing if you are adding that extra uh sound. So here are some example words. You could say student, Spain, study, school, street, and squash. If you record those words and you hear an a student, a Spain, a yeah. study, etc., yeah? then you know, oh, I'm adding this, I'm adding a vowel here that I shouldn't be adding. And so then you just have to practice just making a really long S sound with yeah. no uh beforehand in between, yes. um, and going into that with a strong S at the beginning. And so yeah. I've written some example sentences here to practice. Would you oh, like my. to read these for me, Fran? Yeah. I'm gonna, oh, my God. Yeah. I studied Spanish history at school. We play, I'm, I'm just being careful. Uh, we played a game of squash and then slept straight through the night. Man, Fantastic. that was difficult. <laughs> Fantastic. The only thing I'd correct for you, you were perfect, but the only thing there was the word squash, as in the game of squash. Okay. Yeah, squash. squash, squash. You were perfect. There was no additional vowel sounds before those words beginning with S. So well Thank done, you Fran. Well. You Thank passed you. the test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tip number two, particularly for Spanish speakers, is how you treat the R. So in your language, in Spanish, there's this beautiful tapping or rolling. Sometimes we call it trilling of the R, like a <laughs> kind of sound. Yes, you got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, in British English, we it's like we don't like the letter R very much. Mm -hmm. R, R, when we do pronounce it, is flat. So we just go R, R. Mm -hmm. R. It doesn't touch. The tongue doesn't touch the roof of the mouth at all. Yes. And um we might occasionally tap it if it's following a T, so like tree, tree. You might have a slight tap, but rarely. Yeah. And so as a Spanish speaker learning English, it's important to try and flatten the R and ignore the R usually when it appears at the end of a word. If you're learning British English, American English is very different, but British yeah. English, we ignore that ending R. So these words, could you read these for me? Okay. Uh, true, very, right, hurry, arrive, here. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. The, all those R's were nice and flat. They weren't rolled and they weren't tapped off the roof of the mouse mouth because sometimes you might have um, th, 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 kind yeah. of thought, very, very, very. Spanish style, yeah, Spanish style would be true, very, right, hurry, arrive here yeah, yeah. That's really and yeah in scottish english um, if you're speaking with a scottish accent that's different again they do tap and roll their r's quite a lot um yes. but generally just unless you're going to scotland and wanting to learn the scottish uh, accent and dialect just mm -hmm. try and pull that back a little bit mm -hmm. so here's uh, an example a couple of example sentences do you want to go on these friends yeah let me try uh, Rich, Richard hurried through really heavy traffic. He arrived right on time for their race. Here, read or read? Read. Read uh, Rita's diary entry from the 4th of September, 1944. Very nice. <laughs> I was Very trying nice. to give you a British uh, style. Yeah, that was really nice. You've got some lovely little British uh, vowel sounds going on there. I love it. Um, okay, the last tip for your viewers is um, pronouncing an S as an S. What? What am I talking about? So in British English, there is off and American, actually, there's often an S that is written in the middle or at the end of a word that's actually pronounced as a Z. It's confusing for, for speakers of English um, when yes. to pronounce it as yeah. a Z or not. And usually I with Spanish speakers, I can hear that they will pronounce the S's as S's because yeah. that makes sense. But yeah, this is English and English is confusing. It actually, it actually happens to me a lot of times. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, difficult. It's not naturally, but it's like music. I, I, I have it, but some other words, like I, I thought, hmm, maybe it's just that I said, you know, yeah. voice. So yeah. the words like disease, disease, for example, disease, I often hear with two S's. Yes. Um, busy, busy, it's the busy. Uh, busy. Be, yeah, anything, um, anything that ends with an S or things like was. Instead of, instead of like it should be was with a Z rather than was was yeah. 
Exactly. Okay, so it's and please as well. If you say please, it sounds like Nino, Nino. Yeah, yeah. Here yeah, comes yeah. the police. Please, please with a Z. And so there is a rule, but with English, there are always exceptions to the rule. So I tend yeah. not to teach rules as such. But for those who are watching, going, well, how do I know when to pronounce an S as a Z or an S? The general overarching rule is if the S follows a voiced sound, like B, D, G, M, L, then it's going to be a voiced S, which means it's going to be a Z. So if it's a voiced sound, you give a Z. So, for example, dogs, the G at the end of dog is voiced so the s will be a z dogs most vowels are voiced or all vowels yeah. are voiced yeah. and therefore a voice sound vowels, s yes. follows if the s follows another s sound as well so if, for example um passes pass mm -hmm. and then you're going to have it if the s is at the end passes okay. or Glass. glasses glasses uh -huh. you're going to have a z Please, sound definitely yeah um so if the sound is unvoiced like a k or a t or a p. These are just breathy sounds. P -t -k. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be an s. So you're going to have uh, a regular s. Yeah. Pots, cats, uh -huh. um, laughs because laughs. our f is fricative. Laughs. Yes. It's it, yes. It's voiceless. Voiceless. Yes. Yeah. So here are some examples of voiced s's. Um, busy, bees, uh -huh. is, uh -huh. was, disease. And please. please, here's a couple of, uh, uh, is it one sentence? One sentence for you to try. That's challenging. Okay, yeah, so go on. Dogs and cats with paws and claws rarely pause for thought during can canine? Canine, canine. Canine, I don't know that now. That one, canine versus feline. Or feline. Feline, so it's canine. Canine is anything dog related. Yeah, I know. And feline. It is the it is the, the same in Spanish, but, but I didn't know that pronunciation. Canine and feline. Let me repeat. Canine, like K and number yeah. nine, and feline. Canine and feline. Canine versus feline wars. Then wars, wars. Is with a strong Z at the end. Wars. Uh -huh. Because it's following an or, which is a vowel oh, sound. Yeah. Yeah, the prevalent sound in British English is war. Yeah. Makes, yeah. Sense. So there are some exceptions to the rule, like I said. So yeah. there's words like um, this, this. Mm -hmm. The th is voiced and yeah. it's following a vowel, i, i. So I, in the, according to the rule, it should be a voiced z, but it's not this. Yes. And yeah. um, gas is another one. Gas. Well, not but on gas. the other hand, that these. That, that, that's voice, right? Like these. Mm -hmm. These. Yeah. So it's a tricky one. And I'd always advise doing lots and lots of listening and that's shadowing, great. mimicking. But that is the one thing that I, I would say I correct the most with Spanish speakers is ZS pronunciation. That's amazing because um, I didn't know all those, uh, you know, uh, accurate rules. Amazing. Yeah, like I said, I don't normally teach the rules because if you spend time thinking about the rules yeah. when you're talking, it's stuck. It it's stuck. People will understand you from the context, so oh, it's yeah. not the end of the world mm -hmm. if you do make a, a mistake. But things like police mm -hmm. might could be misconstrued if it's you know depending on how you you put please into a yeah, sentence. It sounds like police, like you said. Yeah. Police. Please. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So, Fran, if I'm allowed to say, I do actually have a pronunciation workshop uh, coming up. It's a masterclass coming Absolutely. up. And yeah. that's free for anyone who wants to join. And we're actually going to be focusing on Spanish speakers and um, the particular problem areas that come up with that Spanish speakers. And yeah. so I'd love to invite you, if you like, and, yes, and all of your all of your viewers to join. Yes, I'm going to learn lots of things, and uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have uh, your access, your link down below. Okay, so guys, take a look at it, sign up for it, and uh, feel free to just uh, write a comment or something. What we're going to cover also in the training is like we did today, some specific points that will um, affect everybody. 
And then I always find that by seeing other people being corrected, especially when they have the same native language as you, Uh that's just as helpful for you watching as it is if it was you getting the personal um, coaching. So I think it's going to be really helpful for students who uh, turn up. And yeah, I'd love to invite you all to come and join. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of them are going to sign up because uh, all the tips you gave us and all the details and especially especially they're focusing on Spanish speakers and this masterclass is focusing on that. So, guys, come on, sign up for it right now or, or else just uh, drop a line. We'll help you out because uh, you're going to give me even more details and we'll get back to you because we read all the comments. Anna, thank you. Thank you so much. Would oh, you like fun. to hear? Aside from that, uh, that masterclass, would you like to share uh, many of your social networks? Because uh, remember, your YouTube channel is uh, Speak Like a Native. English, English Like a Native. Like a native. Yeah, yeah, please do come and, and, and join me. I do quite a lot of content. I do a video a week, at least on my YouTube channel, English Like a Native. And then if you just type English Like a Native into any of the social platforms, you'll sure find me um, on TikTok and Instagram. I'm most active uh, facebook as well and then if you're looking for any particular courses you can find me at englishlikeanative.co.uk where we also have conversation clubs we run um, numerous conversation groups and classes every week uh, with a lovely community really affordable so awesome. you're welcome to come and join us that's great yeah guys you you saw what, what she's able to do capable of doing and uh that's great. So basically, they can type, um, uh, they can look up English, uh, English like a native mm-hmm. on Google, and they're mm-hmm. going to come up with your YouTube, with your Instagram, with your TikTok, and, and most importantly, with your uh, with your courses, which yeah. is English like a like, uh, native dot uh, UK. Dot UK. I put it at the bottom there for you guys. All right. Okay. So thank you so much. And uh, hey, I, w- I was impressed. I really liked it. I learned a lot of things. I'm sure our audience are going to learn a lot too. And uh, go follow her. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll do some other collaborations. What do you think? I'd love to. I'd love to. Thank you, thank Fran. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.